Hello, 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 wherever you have to be located on this mesmerizing planet called Earth, I hope you are having a sensational day, evening, night, wherever you are located. Welcome to my channel. As you see, it's Blender 3D Package, one of the world's greatest 3D packages. I got to say that. But some, if it's, since it's free, it's free, and it's so so professional, it may be the greatest one of them all. But when it comes to actual facts, I think Blender's in the top 10 of 3D modeling software. But since it's free and everybody using it, many people jumping on board, it's at the top of the list. But if you happen to be in Maya, Houdini, 3S Max, Whatever application and you're curious about Blender, thank you for stopping by. Today I'm going to be talking about something that used to mystify me forever. I've been with Blender since version 2.76. I've been like, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, like you can say I'm a hobbyist. I do it like a hobby. But over the last several years, last several months, my interest in it became more and more. You know, like when, you, when you're beginning with it. Yeah, when I was a beginner, I was intense. I was intense. I'm still intense now, but my intensity now is more educational. I'm starting to discover stuff that I never thought about when I was beginning with 2.76. I was watching all, I was watching a bunch of YouTube videos and mesmerized by Blender. Now ideas come to my mind now since I'm used to the software. My topic for the day is, let me go to the front view. I'm going to keep just one, one time. I'm going to keep Harold the Cube. Most of us always get rid of him, but today I'm keeping her on the coup because I'm going to be discussing the array modifier. Let me go to the array modifier right now. I clicked on my modifier wrench. I clicked on add. I'm going to array. And I'm going to tell you what I'm going to be talking about exactly. I'm going to be talking about two of them. First, I'm going to be talking about the, uh, let me see. I annotate. Let me click on annotate. I'm going to be talking about relative offset. Relative. Offset. And. My journey from the day. I'm not going to do no mall and that. I'm doing a more a research. An analyst. Of what. Relative offset is. We've seen it on all the all the discussions about it, Ray. We see relative offset. They talk and they talk about constant offset. They talk about it all over the place. But when they talk about it, they only talk about it in passing. They don't talk about it in great detail, so you can truly understand. I don't blame them. I don't blame them because most of us get on Blender because we like to pizzazz and like to make stuff. I don't think a lot of people like to analyze stuff too much. You know, the society where I live in the Western world, as a math person, I don't think we like to analyze. Since I'm a mathematical person, I have a math degree, whatever, I can analyze a little bit more. So I want to analyze this relative offset. Now, I've been taking my, uh, since I finished teaching my classes with distance learning, I've been thinking about this ever since then. What in the world is relative offset and constant? We're going to go over that. Now, I'm going to read first. The official dialogue from the Blender channel. I typed into my favorite web browser, Blender Array, and it took me to the Blender channel as one of the many links. So I'm on the Blender website right now. It said, relative offset, factor X, Y, and Z. As you see right here, on my mouse it has factor X, Y, and Z. Adds a translation, so that means movement, equal to the object's bounding box. Let me draw the bounding box from this side here. Here's my bounding box right here. Right before I do that, I want to make my color a brighter color. I want to make my um a brighter color. I'll make it like yellow so everybody can see it. No, with no excuses. Alright, now if you hear any barking, I apologize. I have an 11 month year old Andrew Terrier going through the teething phase and he's right here with me now so if you hear any barking I can't I can't stop nature from doing this thing so here's my bounding box right here 
What I know of Blender, there's bound and box. It's two units in every direction. Two units X, two <coughs> units Y, two units Z. So I'm just going to put two units, two units right here. So the definition say, adds a translation, which is movement, to the object's bounding box, which I have. Bounding box size along each axis. I'm dealing with the X axis now, just X. Multiply by a scale factor to the offset X, Y, or Z. I'm only dealing with X. It applies to all of them. Scaling factors can be specified when we type in that box. So here we go. Right now, in my array modifier, my count is, I have it set to uh, 1. Now, I'm going to set it to 2. Well, I'm going to set my X to 0. I'm going to set everything to initial state. So my X is 0. I'm going to set it to 2. Nothing didn't appear because my X, Y, and Z are both 0. This is what I want to do next. I want to verify mathematically that this box is roughly 2 centimeters or 2 units long. Now, you know I'm doing it by hand. It's not going to be perfect. Let me come up here and see how long this box is. All right, so it's in meters. I'm going over. I passed the one meter mark. Roughly two meters. Yes, he is roughly two meters. There. I stopped at two points. So, it's, so the box is two meters or two units, whatever you want to call it. Okay, we got that far. Next, I want to place where my box end at. It's ending right here with my yellow line because that's... This is going to be the magic right here that give me information about all of this stuff right here. What I'm going to be doing next. Now, I'm going to take it nice and easy. Nice and easy. I'm going to increase my X by 5 tenths or 1 half. 0.5. 1 half. 5 tenths. Zap. Okay. There it is. 5 tenths. So let me see how long this thing is now. Let me get my little ruler. Click back on that. Click back on my measurement tool. Let me see if it's, what's the measurement of this? It's one. Because it said, let me open up that little window on my phone. It said, add and tra adds a translation equal to the object's bounding box size along each Axis multiply that's the clue right there multiply by a scaling factor to the offset so my scaling factor was five tenths or one half if you multiply two let me go up here uh, I got I'm gonna show you the math I hope I, I hope I, don't, I hope I don't turn everybody off but we have to truly I want to truly understand this. 0.5, 5 tenths is equal to 1 half. We know the box is 2. And then we say it's multiplied. I use the dot for multiplication. The dot. Times 0.5, which is equal to 1 half. 1 half. So, I'll make this a fraction 2 over 1 to make it look nice and neat. You know, we can cross... Divide. Two goes in the two one time. Two goes into this two one time. And one times one is one. In this case, it's one meter. So when I clicked here, that box, it did fit the definition. I multiplied by my scaling factor of one half. Okay, so that's cool. Let me erase this. I'm, but I'm, I'm not going to, I'm going to keep going. Let me erase my math here. So we see I'm actually learning what this definition said. I'm not just, just, just taking it. So now my box was a uh, one half. I'm going to multiply times one. One. Let me measure it now. Get the measurement. I'm starting right here. 
right at the end. So remember, it's important. There we go. It's roughly two. You know, I'm not going to be perfect, but it's close to two. 1.98, you say it's two. So it's two. So this is the most important thing. You have to start from where your object ends at. Because you see, when I increase the number, it's increasing it from the, what's that, from the left to right? Yeah, left to right. So I'll put it back to two. Okay, so we saw that. Now, here's the math again. I increase it to one. So I can say, in my pen, two times one, two times one, as you all know, is two. And that box was approximately two inches. Let me click back on the measurement. See, it's approximately two. You know, I'm doing it by hand, so I can't be perfect. Okay. So we got that out the way. Now, what happened if I exceed the length of my starting two unit box? So now I'm increasing by one, one, one point three. All right, there we got the 1.3. Now, I'm going to measure. We know this box is 2. We know this box right here. We know this is 2 units. We know it's 2 units or 2 meters. Let me see what is the measurement from this space from here to there. Let me see what that is. All right, so it's a 0.5. Let me measure the total distance. Okay, so the total distance is a uh, 2.6 so it increased it by a factor of uh let me do the multiplication let me do the multiplication so i have two i know my box two units then i said times 1.3 that should give me 2.6 so that's the math so it fits in with the math. So it's multiplied. So whatever I put in there for that factor, it gets multiplied. Let me go back to this. It says, see, 2.6. So whatever I put in here for the factor, it gets multiplied by, uh, it gets multiplied by the length of the original object. I know, see, we still got that wrapped around our head. But it's still going to make that extra space. So the space between here, the space between here, this line, and here is roughly six tenths of an inch. So, okay, good. So that's it for the explanation of, uh, Relative offset. I see that is a multiplication factor. A multiplication factor. So whenever you put a number in there, and even if I do my, I add a third box. Let me put another one. Oops, I like the front view. So even if I put a third box, I'm going to get rid of my end. Even if I put a third box in here. That multiplication factor will take place from here from here to the other. I can't okay. If I shift it over, what will happen? Okay, good, it shift over. From here I, I gotta start right there. Let me get my little measurement tool again. Let me see what it is. Alright, so it's going to two, yes, 2.6. So keep that in mind when you do the scale factor. 
that will tell you how far will your boxes be from the preceding box. Okay. So we clear on that. I hope that helped you out with the relative offset. I know it's some math involved. It's some math involved. So sorry about the math. But I said I had to try to wrap my head about it. But what did it mean? So that factor, I know it's going to be 2.3. And then, you know, if I subtract, if I subtract, uh, let me get my, and then I can figure it out. If I say I have, I know it's going to be 2.6. That's the distance between each of them. When you do the scale factor, then I subtract 2 from it. That's the, that's the dimension of my first box. I know there should be six tenths of space between the box. And let's go back up here and prove it again. Let me click here on my measurement tool. I'm going to go over here. Let's see if it's six tenths of space. Roughly. See, roughly is six tenths. You know, I got some other little decimal thing, but I'm doing it by hand. All right, so now I truly understand what the relative offset is. And remember, all you need to know the relative offset between two boxes. The first two. Everything else is just a repetition of it. So that's the important part. Say, so let me increase my scale factor by 1.3, 1.6, or, or 2. Let me subtract it from my, uh, the value from my original dimension object. Because you know, in Blender, it always gives you the dimension of the object X, Y, and Z. And then it'll tell you how much space is between the two objects. Here's my space right in here. Okay, so that, that covers a relative offset. Now, let me go to the other one. Let me erase all my information here. Let me move this over. Let me see. Let me get the pan. I like that hand. That hand come in handy. Let me erase all this stuff now. And go to the next one. Like I said, I always was watching those videos on uh, YouTube about uh, relative arrays, relative offset, and constant. But it didn't make no sense to me. And you know, when, when you're modeling, you really don't feel like doing a whole lot of thinking. But lucky for me, like I said, I got that daggone degree. So I can think a little bit more abstractly sometimes. So now let's go to constant offset. So let me put up here now what I want to tackle. I want to tackle constant. Of. So now we got relative. What does the word constant mean? Let me look on this website and read what it says for constant offset. All right, now I'm, I'm looking down my list. Relative offset. I said constant offset. Once more, let me click on my object. Let me set everything to zero. Zap. Let me read the definition. Distance. Here's the distance where my mouse at. Distance. X, Y, and Z. Adds. Here we go. Adds a constant translation component. Okay. I just know the word translation means movement. Component. To the duplicate object's offset. So, where, so where, where's the starting at? X, Y, and Z constant components can be specified. Okay, see? To the normal person. What in the world is that saying? <laughs> what in the world is that saying to the, to the normal person? It sounds gibberish. So let's again. We know. Okay, I can get rid of all this stuff. Get rid of this. Get rid of this. Get rid of this. And I do it all over again. Click on the X. And I'm using, you see, I'm using uh, the measurement tool. If you never used it, it comes in handy. Okay, why this one? Okay. It comes in handy when you're dealing with these distance between your objects. And you want to make it real world relatable. Let me measure this stuff again. We know this should be about two blended units. I'm just going to do it again. You know, I don't have to. Okay, what's going on? That looks more than two units. All right. I should start for a new cube. Maybe I, I did too much movement. 
Click on the cube, move it, delete it. Let me add another one. Mm -hmm. Cube. Okay, I'll leave it right there. I ain't gonna make no changes. All right, let me measure from side to side again. Why? Let me check this item. It said two meters over here, but in here, why has 2.3? What if I did something wrong? Oh, I can see right here. Let me do it again. Shift A. Sorry about that, people. All right, but we know each of them for the, from the dimensions. It's two units. I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna kill myself worrying about this stuff. I also want to get this over with. We know, based on the information in this thing, this thing is uh. Two, two units, or really two meters, two meters, all right, so here we go, what, I just want to measure it again, I wonder why it's, oops, that's wrong, eh. Yeah, I'll figure that out later. Why does it say it's 2.3? I'll figure that out later. I ain't worrying about that now. Anyway, according to this, uh, that mention, it's a two meters with my mouse at two meters, two meters. It's two meters by that information right there. So I can hit the NA and get rid of that. All right. I clicked on this. I'm going to my add modifier. I'm going back to array. I want to make it one. All right. I'm dealt with relative. I can take it off of that. I'm going to constant. All right. So once more, the main thing I'm concerned about is this little, the end. Because you know it goes from left to right. The end. Right here. Right here. I'm going to type in five temps. Five temps. Or one half. Oh, I got to put it on two now, too. There we go. I put it on two. I made the dimension five temps. Let's measure this. Let's see what it is. And we see that is actually, like I said, my hands sort of shaky. It's, it says point five. 0.5. That's so it's five tenths. So it's not working like the relative. The relative did multiplication. Here it is said adds a transformation. So I typed in. I typed in. Oops. I typed in five tenths. And it added the five tenths. So realistically, from here. To here, it should be, I, I'm not, because the measurement was off. It should be two and five tenths, but I doubt it because you remember when I did it before, the little measurement, I don't know why. And I ain't going to make the video over again. That's how long it should be. But you see, it goes hand in hand. There's no magic. If I put five tenths here for X, Y, or Z, that's what it's going to show. Five tenths. So I'm going to put it right here. It was five tenths. So this one may be easy because you know what you're getting with this. The constant, <laughs> the multiplication may take constant. That may be the easiest one to use. Easy. Now I'm going to make some adjustments to it. I'm going to make it one. So let me measure what it is now. Now that should be one unit. Let me get my measurement tool. From here to here. It should be roughly one meter. And zap. That's a 1.0. That's even closer. So with the constant, you get it what you put in. One meter. And it show up one meter. 
Now I'm going to take it overboard. We know if I put two in here, it should give me two. It should give me two. Let me measure it. Two meters should give me two meters roughly. And roughly, see, two meters, 2.1, but you know it's two meters. Because my hand's shaky. Now I'm going to take it up further. I'm going to say 2.2. What that's going, what that going to give me? Two. Now, with this, it should give me a space because remember, it's getting the information from that first block right here. This the main. This the main thing right here. Main. The information coming from my main is not going to stretch it. It's not going to shrink it. It's basing off of that. So I'm going to type in a uh, 2.2 and 2 temps. 2.2. Let me do my measurement and see what I get. I should get two and two temps. Let me stretch it out. Or, you know, approximately two and two temps. Okay, I passed the two. Oh. But this say. Oh. This is, this say roughly two and five temps. Uh-oh, so I was wrong. Why is that? Why? Let me do it again. Yes. 2.5. Roughly. So. That is. Let me see how much. Oh man, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do front. Maybe it's off because I'm not doing front view. See, it's off. Let me click on this. But uh, my original, my original resume was right, so I'm gonna take it off here. Click on this, erase it. And it was not based on. I want to base it on that side front view. Okay, let me start it now. I'm going to measure from here to here, but it still probably come out the same. Okay, see, now that I did that side view, it's 2.2. See, when it wasn't, when I, when I, when it was more twisted. So, the constant give you, it, you can have an idea exactly what you're getting. I may start using the constant now. I may stay away from relative. Because relative, you got to do a lot of multiplication. Constant. If I put 2.2 in there, I know it's going to give me, it should be two tenths of space between here. Let me measure the space. Two tenths. Yes, two tenths. See? Two tenths. Point two. I'm going to start, I might start using constant now because I know exactly what I'm getting. I don't got to compute that extra space. I know it's 2.2. I know it's going to give me the original, the main object, which is here. It gave me the main. And then it gave me two temps of extra space. And if I do another one, if I add another one on here, remember, the starting point will be right here. Here's the starting point. Each of them start from the preceding one. Now, I can't show you everything here because it's going to go off the screen if I add a third one. If I add a third one, it's off the screen like that. You see, so I can't measure it. But maybe I can. I'm, I'm going to try and see. Oh, I know what I can do. I can just pan it over and see what it is. All right, so let's see what the measurement is for this when I add that third object. Let's see if it's close. Yep, see? That one. It's still two and two tenths. So that's the beauty. Okay, I think I like the constant now. Because I know exactly what I'm getting. Exactly. So that's it, my good people. I try to the best of my ability to give a, an analysis of relative offset and constant offset. I hope I gave you a little bit of, a, a little bit of awareness of what it means. Because like I said earlier, in so many videos, it just briefly go over it. Briefly. I know, I, don't, I know they mean well. I know they mean well. But for me, now I'm moving forward for rays. I know what to expect from each ray. 
each of those relative constant and constant relative offset and constant. I know if I'm using relative offset, I better multiply it times whatever number I put in there. Then to find the, the space between the two objects, I have to do subtraction. With constant, I don't have to do no subtraction. I know what I'm getting. I know if my object, if I measure something, it's always good to measure it. If I measure Susanna from one end to the other, and she's four centimeters, I know if I, if I say five centimeters, I know how much space is going to be between. Thank you for stopping by, my good people. Never give up and quit. Like, like you see, I'm over 30, and I keep pushing forward. Ideas keep coming to my mind, even though I'm educated by trade. Ideas for Blender, because I love doing this 3D so much. Who wouldn't? Well, when you can make anything that you want to make, it's almost like you got the power of a, of a god. Of a god. You can make anything that you can imagine. You just have to understand it. So keep pushing forward. The Blender community is rooting for you. I, I'm rooting for you. Tom Rosenthal wants you to push forward. The Blender artists, they want you to push forward. That's one thing I like about the Blender artists. It's like nobody's jealous of the other one. Because you know, if you watch YouTube videos, they'll be saying who the top Blender, um, Blender artist is. It's like they don't have no conflicts with each other. They collaborate. Keep pushing forward. Don't stop until the next time, good people. Peace.